Hi everyone, Sajid Amit here and welcome to my review of the Shanling EC Mini. So the EC Mini is a portable CD player which is battery operated, which sounds fantastic. Um, so in case you're wondering why someone would use anything that's battery operated, it's because battery does protect you from dirty power and it gives you cleaner power. Um, so it's not every day that you see something like this, which is a bit of an homage to the, you know, CD players we grew up with, the Sony CD players and, you know, all that we grew up with back in the day. Uh, has a touch screen, a lot of power, it's feature packed. I'll talk about the features in a bit, but this is a wonderful device. It's about one kilogram in weight. It comes in with this beautiful leather case with the Shanling logo embossed and a plethora of features and buttons and touch screen. And this is just so that a lot of you audiophiles who are into portable audio can put your music in an SD card. You can put, you can use an SD card that's up to two terabytes and use music and local playback or if you are a CD aficionado and you also are a portable audio enthusiast, you can collect CDs, which is a wonderful thing to do. CDs, CDs are very cheap nowadays, guys. They're cheaper than they were in their heyday in the late 80s. In the late 80s, CDs could be had for about $20 and they're about $10, $15 now. And you know, $20 in the late 80s is now $40, I think. So in many ways, you essentially are paying about a third of the price that you used to pay back then. Um, CDs can be had everywhere. CDs are just wonderful, tactile, fun. You can you know, enjoy the cover art. You can listen to an entire album from track one till track 12. And that's wonderful because a lot of times without listening to an entire album, you don't often get a sense of the artist's vision. Sometimes track three taken out of context doesn't sound as good unless you've heard track one and two. The sequence of songs or tracks on an album is not an accident. Sometimes an artist just sets out with a certain vision that the artist then achieves over the course of many, many tracks. So nowadays with modern playback or modern streaming and modern listening, a lot of people, including myself, will not listen to entire albums. What we'll do is we'll just go straight to the number of the beast or the trooper. However, we'll miss out on how great a song perhaps Ace's High was. And of course, this is just a theoretical example. This just happens to be a best of album. So in this case, all of these are wonderful tracks. But in many cases, if you're not listening to a best of album, what might happen is you will skip a lot of tracks, which could otherwise be pleasurable if you just listened. A lot of tracks are slow burner, guys. I know I'm talking about music more than, you know, audio gear here, but I do think I have discovered and rediscovered my the pleasure to be had in listening to an album from cover to cover, track to track. It's almost like reading an entire book from the preface to the last page as opposed to reading a chapter that you like. Especially in the case of fiction, it makes no sense. It makes a bit more sense in audio, but it is a lost art that I think a lot of us don't enjoy anymore because streaming, I think, does induce a bit of ADD, right? We are skipping tracks. We're skipping tracks. We're skipping genres. We're skipping artists. CDs put an end to it, and I think it has made me connect with audio in a very different way. I still love streaming. However, now I have two different ways in which I listen. I stream and I am just then, you know, shuffling through albums and tracks and artists and genres. And then I do CDs in which I'm more or less listening to an album. I mean, I do skip one, one or two tracks now and then if it's overplayed. But the whole thing about CDs, guys, is that it is a lost art. It does test your patience a bit, but it's not as high maintenance as a vinyl record. It's not ex as expensive as vinyl is. You don't have to pay 30 to to $100 for this. It's just cheap. It's very cheap, like I said, you know. It's low main maintenance. And of course, you can buy CDs everywhere. Now, I admit I have a lot of nostalgia associated with CDs because I grew up playing CDs and audio cassettes. So I'm from that generation, guys. You might still not relate with it, but I do urge you to give it a shot. Convenience aside, CDs also sound fantastic. CDs sound, to me, to be better than streaming. I'm not the only one who thinks this. John Darko thinks this. Cheap Audio Man thinks this. Uh, uh, Michael Andrews, I think another another reviewer has made videos of the, about this. There are plenty of other reviewers and audio enthusiasts who talk about how CDs sound better. It's unfortunate because a lot of times we in portable audio we miss the uh, the complexity and richness that you know exists in the two channel universe. But the converse is also true. A lot of two-channel enthusiasts have that I've met have been dismissive of the portable audio hobby. And only when they have been, you know, forced to listen to, let's say, something like 
a campfire trifecta or a Sennheiser HD 100s that they've come around and I've said, oh, wow, headphones can be much better than the Sony Bluetooth headphone that I have or IMs can be much better than the earbuds that I have from Bose, right? So a lot of discovery to be had in portable audio, a lot of discovery to be had in the world of two channel. Shanling has married the two here. This is not Shanling's first rodeo. These guys at Shanling have a bit of a hi-fi pedigree. They used to make CD players before they became famous with their dApps and stuff. And recently, they've come up with a bunch of very interestingly priced CD players and transport. And the reason I say they're interestingly priced is because in the two-channel universe, guys, you can end up paying $7,000 for a transport. Shanling will give you a really high-quality transport. This is not a transport, but it can be used as a transport by using the USB out. Very few CD players have a USB out. Most of the time, the digital out is a coax or an optical cable. This allows you to bypass the ESS ES9219 DAC chips inside, which you might not want to because they're very good, decent DAC as well. But you can bypass this and connect it to a Denifrips Terminator if you have one, or a Hall Audio May, or a Core Dave, or a DCS Bartok. Whatever you got, you can connect the CD player to and thereby taking advantage of your wonderful DAC. That's why you have a USB out. In terms of its outputs and inputs, in terms of, you know, it's got three analog outputs, single ended 3.5, balance 4.4, very tactile buttons here, a leather cover, of course, a touch screen that you see over here, tactile buttons here as well. And you also have RCA preamp out, so micro SD card slot, a USB DAC, like I told you, a charging USB slot. A uh, bi-directional Bluetooth antenna, which basically allows you to, let's say, stream music to your Bluetooth headphones or you stream music from your phone if you want to stream Tidal or Cobas via Bluetooth to this device. That can be done as well. In vehicle mode, if you switch it to on, basically allows you to connect it to your car stereo system using the USB out here. And then it starts when the car starts, which is just very, very convenient. It's a pity that a lot of cars don't come with CD players anymore. I mean, most don't. Okay, guys. It has 240 milliwatts of power at 32 ohms, which might not sound like a lot, but I've driven planars of this. And I just want to make the point that I'm not convinced by this power rating because it sounds a lot more powerful than it is rated at. I have driven IMs that are, you know, relatively hard to drive to deafening levels using about what? I mean, 30 clicks. It's currently at, it's reading the disc, which is why the power is not working right away. It's at 50 clicks, which is at half volume. And this was driving the HE1000SE to a definitely, definitely loud volume. What I'm saying is the 250 milliwatts of power should not dissuade you even if you want to run headphones with this. You can run headphones and IMs with this, of course. This 4.4 is powerful. You can, of course, then take this as a USB DAC and connect it to a power amp because it has a preamp functionality. You're most likely going to get this, use it in the room, especially for speakers, plug it to an external DAC, and voila, you have a very, very inexpensive transport at $360. Guys, if a different brand than Chandling made this, and, you know, I don't know, priced it at $2,000 or $1,000, a lot of people will be scurrying for this. And I hope people are scurrying for this. I mean, if you don't want to scurry, then that's fine. You should not scurry. But if you want to scurry because you're looking for a portable CD player, or if you want a DAP that plays back music locally using its micro SD card, you can then still get this because it does play back music wonderfully with the great, warm, musical, resolving Shanling House Sound. The Shanling House Sound is punchy, it's bassy, it's very musical. It's 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 not warm at the expense of the treble. It does have treble clarity, but it's definitely not bright. And it's, it's a bit laid back. And I love this for that reason. It's a wonderful sound. The house sound is preserved even in the CD player. And it's, you know, the transport will color the sound less perhaps but the cd player here is just beautifully tuned so that's all i have for you guys is this for you i don't know but this is for me because i've been craving and wanting a cd player ever since i connected my brisa audio suranagi to a full-sized cd player i realized then and there the cd sound better than streaming and i wanted to get the best possible source for my wonderful transducers so I have ventured into the world of full-sized CD players, and I've even bought a Marantz. This fills the wonderful niche where I can take the CD player to bed with my IMs, or to my car, connect it to my car, or sit in the passenger passenger seat and listen to it, or play music via Bluetooth. All this works, guys. 
you get 7.5 hours with CD playback, about a day or 24 hours with micro SD card playback. Plethora of features. I have I must not have shown you the screen. The screen is something else. It's you know playing back CDs now, and and I think I have the raw, uh, the Dark Straits album here. Um, so that's th that's what the screen looks like. You can switch between the USB DAC mode, the BT Bluetooth input. You can play with local files, and then of course you can go to the system. It's very responsive actually, and you have a plethora of settings you can maneuver through. And have a lot of fun with this. That's all I have, guys. It is a great device, and I think it's aggressively priced at $360. And I congratulate Channeling for a way of doing innovation that's not just driven by what the market thinks it wants, but also by what they're passionate about. Also, in ways that are paying some tribute or homage to their hi fi past. Also, to sort of innovate and sort of, you know, try to fill a niche need that perhaps could cater to stereophiles as much as portable audio enthusiasts. Bravo, Shandling. You have won my heart with this, and I think I'll be buying more of your products henceforth. Thank you for watching, guys. If this was useful, give it a like and follow my channel if you have not, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.